What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Scoff Chronicles with yours truly, Smooth Guy O, aka the Black Ron Burgundy. We in the building right now. And today's episode is a special one for me, especially for all hip hop fans, fans in general, you know. I have a special guest who I feel that is the one of the most unappreciated individuals in hip hop today. He was the he's the most important person in this whole entire music discovery thing when it comes to discovering new artists in general, you know. He is the man that discovered the man that did amazing stuff for Bad Boy, for for Diddy, for Junior Mafia, and for America in general. And it's it's we wouldn't have the, the late great notorious B.I.G. If it wasn't for this guy sitting next to me as we speak. So without further ado, we'd like to welcome DJ 50 Grand, the guy who discovered the Notorious B.I.G., an, an iconic figure who need to get his flowers right now. How's it going, my guy? How's everything? Everything is good, man. Can't complain. Make it do what it do. That's, Keep pushing. That's all we can do at the end of the day, you know. I appreciate you for coming up and scoffing with me on the Scoff Chronicles. Anytime. It's, it's, it's an honor. For what you have done for the culture, especially for when discovering a kind of figure like the Notorious B.I.G. So it's only right, you know, be giving his flowers while doing the same for you, you know. Definitely, definitely. Now, the, the Biggie's birthday is coming up this weekend. So I want to have a, a situation we could just uh, take a trip back down memory lane. Back when it was you and him on the streets of, of, of Fulton, you know, running wild, getting this money. Illegal, illegally for the most part. Can you take us down one of the, a, a day in the life of Biggie and DJ Fifty Grand on the come up, trying to get to it one day at a time? No, I can't take you down memory lane on Fulton Street. <laughs> I can take you memory lane on Bethany and Quincy. I hear that. even better. That's that's the the, the pride and joy of the best star in the building for the most part. You know, it's right around the vicinity. But how was it? How was it? You know, being around somebody like Biggie. Hustling together and even hearing his his raps and his flows on the come up. Well, number one, man, I'm I'm much older than Big. Mm -hmm. I met Big when he was 15 years old. He went by the name of MC Quest. Okay. My man D Rock brought him on Bethany Quincy where we hustled at. Mm -hmm. And D Rock told him who I am. I know a lot of people like DJ Mr. C, Big Daddy Kane, a lot of you know artists out there. Right. So when Big stepped to me, he said, "Yo, I know you. I heard you know a lot of people." I want you to be my DJ. So I said, no problem. So I'm out there, I'm hustling. When I finish, you know, I like to smoke and drink. Mm -hmm. Old Gold Brothers, OGB in the building. Fire. fire. So <laughs> we got some weed, we got some beer. And me and D-Rock, I took Big to my basement. Mm -hmm. And I threw on some break beats. And he grabbed the mic. And he started flowing. Mm -hmm. He flowed so hard that he changed me. I never, I ain't understood what he was doing, yeah. because I'm used to just cutting and scratching, right. while people just get on the mic and keep rhyming. Mm -hmm. But Big broke it down, he had verses. Mm. He knew how to stop the record, throw in a hook. He taught me all that. So he changed me from the very first demo we did. We cut four demos that day. Right. And to this day, that first demo we cut is the demo I took to DJ Mr. C. Mm -hmm. And Big got signed after that. That's so dope right there. Just just hearing the stories about how you was able to be in the in the presence of greatness before you even be, be reached that that plateau for the most part is something that I admire. And speaking of of the demo, like did you wanted to use the ain't no half stepping beat because it sounds similar to it, but it really wasn't it. Like can you give me a breakdown of the beat selection when it comes to making that demo tape? No, what it was, I just threw on all uptown beat. Back in back then when we was cutting and scratching to be a DJ, mm -hmm. you had to learn from break beats. Gotcha. But you know that they're only like a certain amount of seconds and you gotta keep it on point. Right. So I started, you know, I was using break beats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it worked out. Dope, dope, dope. And then I knew something, something about his voice. I know I had something good. Mm. I just ain't know what it was, but I know it was something good. Copy, copy. So let me ask you something as like a, a hip hop historian for the most part. You know, you know, half stepping was the it beat to rhyme more at the time. But same example, it wasn't available, and and Big, Big Daddy Kane was just hating on y'all for even letting anybody use the beat. If you had to choose a different beat to use to record a demo with Biggie, what would it be at the time? Uh, I wouldn't know. It was just a, it was a bunch of uptown beats out there. Okay. It just so happened 
that's the one I threw on. Right. And Big was a big fan of Big Daddy Kane at the time, but it wasn't because who used that beat. Right. It was just beats that I was playing. Got it. So it was just what happened. It ain't nothing about me picking out a song, yo, this sound right for Big. Nah, I was throwing on everything. Gotcha. And everything I threw on, he flowed to it. We ain't playing no songs. We ain't playing none of that. This was a one-shot deal. A one one take. One take only. I was doing this record. He get on the mic. And then when it came out, that's what it is. <laughs> that's just what it was. Ain't no practicing. I just met this man 20 minutes ago. No practicing, no demo, no rehearsing, no none of that. That's just talent right there. That's, that's just real talent right there, you know? Definitely, definitely. Now, had you knew that this... His demo alone would have such a huge impact in hip hop in general. When you... I, no, I never would expect that, but I knew I had something good. And once I finished the demo, mm -hmm. I'm gonna took it on the app to the OGB brother, and if we was 100 deep, mm -hmm. everybody bobbing their head. So I'm looking at the feedback. So okay, now I can take the I can take it to Mr. C, which was my partner, mm -hmm. lived right around the corner from me. I hunted them down. He was on. He was on tour with Kane. Right. I hunted them down. Sound in the for two, three days. When I caught up with him, I said, "You need to listen to the demo." I ain't got time right now. I got to go back on tour, man. You gonna listen to this demo? <laughs> you are gonna listen to this shit right now? We about to fight, you know? Right, right. So he said, "Yo, let me get it." I gave it to him. Uh -huh. He said, "I should not come back." He drove around the block, came right back. Yo, who this kid is? <laughs> you want him be on my suit when I come back? X Y Z date. And when he came back, we was there. We went upstairs to his crib. Mm -hmm. He cleaned up the demo. He re he cleaned it up. Right. And that was it from there. I, after that, I think Big got signed. It, it was like a year, six months, but it seemed like the next day to me. That's how quick it went. That's so fire right there. And like, I know uh, when he got signed, the source highlighted him as unsigned hype. And that, that, that picture... You was in the background. If they was the people was to look real good, you was standing in the background. I'm always in the background supplying the sales. <laughs> it's only right. That's why they call you fifty grand. Right. The OG. It's, it's, it's only right. Now, did you know that you was going to be in that picture? Like, can you took me? Uh, can you give me a heads up or take me through that day? No, it's, with... it's, it's like thirteen of them pictures. Yeah, we 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 paid for that. We, we that was planned. Mm -hmm. That me and Big taking the. Uh, Taking pictures on Bedford and Quincy. Okay. Yeah, that's for the source. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So, so were you able to meet Dave Mays the, all the, or any of the source writers who was like, yo, this guy is dope and you the person that's behind it? No, like, my man is Maddie C from okay. the source. Maddie that's C. That's my boy. He's an OG. He's, he's yeah. very, very, very reputable in the hip hop. He's the one that had most. He had Ghostface. He had mm -hmm. Wu-Tang. He had... Um, uh, he, Mob Deep. Okay. He had um, Billy dancing them. Which which one? Lil Fame in them. M O P. M O P. Got he had it. a couple of acts. Right. Oh. Yeah. And then he 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 the neighborhood guy. Yeah. Yeah. Right around the hood. Okay. Yes. Dope. Dope. Now, the while your your adventure or your friendship with Biggie, I noticed that he was just sharpening up his his lyrical game, but at the same time, you was. With, creating a lot of buzz as a DJ. And one of those those situations y'all stumbled upon was with Supreme. And I did some due diligence and apparently he said that how during that famous battle where Biggie got him out the paint on that on that corner <laughs> on Quincy and Gates. Initially he was supposed to battle you on the ones and twos. Like what was that that situation all about? Well, that's a lie because that <laughs> battle took place on a Tuesday. Uh -huh. It was just a nice day. We out there getting money. So what we do, mm -hmm. we bring the music out anytime, any any time of the day, mm -hmm. and set up and just start playing music. Mm -hmm. Just so happened, big pulled up, just coming from out of town. So we playing music, and Prem happened to come around. Right. So I had other rappers out there rapping, you know, OGB rappers. We were just flowing, having a good time. Right. Prem came over there, he stepped on, he, he touched the mic. But him and Big, known for battling each other every time they see each other. So that wasn't nothing new. Right. I know that they it's, battled at least seven to eight times yeah. prior to that, that infamous yeah, battle. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It just so happened, when he came on Beverly and touched that mic, mm -hmm. that was it. And he just got him out the paint. Just, just washed and, him up. He wasn't supposed to battle me because he couldn't touch me. <laughs> I feel that, that if he was to see this interview... He might give you a call like, yo, what's up? He, he, he gonna do that anyway. 
Mm. I hope I hope he's watching. He, he, he gonna do that. You're more than welcome to come to the Scoff Chronicles. We can have a nice little sit down and get the situated versus style. You You're know? right. It's only right. It is only right. So probably you talk a lot of, but I can back it up. <laughs> oh, Supreme, if you watching, give me a holler. I'm, I'm on. I'm in. I'm on the Instagram too. Smooth guy. Oh, give me a holler. It's only right. So my next question to you will be: Throughout the your entire time just hustling with, and, and just kicking it with Biggie. Was there been a situation where he bought around Busta Rhymes or Jay-Z or DMX during the times he was going to school? Because a lot of people didn't realize that he went to George, George Weston House where at the time those acts were still in school, but they was freestyling and battling one another. Was no, he never brought none of them around the hood. Okay. No, not at the time because he wasn't discovered yet. Got it. But even even if you know he was going to school and he was trying to get his bars up in, in front of them, he, it was never a situation where, hey, yo, pull up to my block, we get. Nah, it wasn't was like that. It's a big guy famous. That's when people start pulling up. Well, he got when he got recognized. Mm -hmm. That's when people start pulling up. Right, right. So during out the, 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 the times in which he's getting recognized, how what were your 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 um feelings or your your observations of? Biggie throughout his um come up as a superstar. I was just happy to be around a young brother, man. Mm -hmm. He changed me like music wise. He changed me. Mm -hmm. I still was a hustler, but he changed me. And I I cut some of my OGB brothers off to concentrate on Big mm -hmm. to get him out there. Even though I ain't know really know too much about the music, mm -hmm. but Mr. C was my backup guy. Gotcha, gotcha. And he made sure. Big got where he belonged. He took from Mr. C went to Maddie C. Right. Source Magazine. From Maddie C went to Puff Daddy. And that was it. Right. Big never took none of this shit serious in the beginning. Mm -hmm. So he stayed a hustler, did what he did, but mm -hmm. it worked out for the best. That's love. And now it's been, I think Biggie's supposed to have been 50 years old. Yeah, Saturday coming up. It's Saturday, he'll been 50 now. As you see all these special stuff that the city is, is, is just, you know, rolling out the red carpet for him and his legacy. How do you feel about, you know, all these dope activations with him, pop-up events? and? I'm proud. I wish he was here to see it and witness it. Mm -hmm. I'm proud. So, you know, like, March 9th, May 21st, I'm Biggie. Mm. I don't get the, 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 the flowers for it, but I'm Biggie. As you Can't should. Can't nobody change that. As you should. If I would one for me... Probably wouldn't be no biggie. As you I should. don't think it would be a biggie. So I'm proud of what I did. And I'm glad I'm able to give you your flowers on Thank this you. particular really day. It. And once people realize who's this league is this legend I'm sitting next to right now, you already know that it's only we had to spend a block and scoff with DJ fifty grand. I ain't going nowhere. Oh, you gonna you you you're gonna you be pulling up to your stoop and get a drink or two after, after we done? <laughs> hey, I drink. That's what I do. Listen, I'm about to go have me a drink. We're gonna talk more about Biggie and his legacy right now. Don't scoff. Tune in. Take it easy. Scoff Chronicles. DJ Fifty Grand. Hold on, got, one oh, minute. One Same, more thing. One, one more thing, thing I say. Well, shout out to your father, Facts. Super Dave. <laughs> That's my man for over twenty something years. <laughs> so he made this possible. You absolutely right. And I did right. it on the arm of Super Dave. You absolutely right. My apologies. I got to give a shout out to the OG who who put me in this earth, you know, roughly, what, two weeks ago, my birthday passed on May 10th. Dave White, Super Dave, quote unquote, the photographer, respected shooter. So I appreciate him for setting this up. I got to give him his flowers too. And yeah. You, you'll get to see who Super Dave is in, in, in one particular <laughs> given time. Not right now. It's too early. It's way too early. But be, stay on the lookout for that moment. Yeah, but shout out you to know? the real Super Dave. Dave, my dad, appreciate you for that. Scott Chronicles, Smooth Guy O. Thank you, DJ 50 Grand. It's and my OGB brothers, we in here. It's only right. Peace.